has to go to the garbage so they <laughs> okay, so we're starting on lesson three. This is very similar to what we were doing yesterday. Instead of taking the sum and difference of functions, we're now going to be multiplying functions. In other words, it's the product of functions. So, um, in this case, we have function f, which is given by this line, and we have function g given by this line here. Similar to yesterday. Yes, make an appearance. <laughs> Similar to yesterday, we are going to have to take the information from the table and we're going to be solving for, thank you, solving for fg of x. So we're multiplying f of g, or sorry, f of x, multiplied by g of x. All of the x values will stay the same. So this is the x coordinate of the point that we're going to eventually plot. We're trying to solve for the y coordinate of that point. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take the value of f of x and multiply it by the value of g of x given that one x coordinate. Okay, so we just have to do a little basic multiplication here. So f of x times g of x. Negative 7 times negative 7. 49. Okay, next one. Negative 5 times negative, negative 6. Oh, you guys are geniuses. Negative 3 times negative 5. <laughs> Thank you. Eight, negative 1 times negative 4. Positive 4. 1 times negative 3. Negative 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then just keep going down. Negative 5. And then we get 0. And then 9. So the math on that isn't too tricky. It's just multiplying two numbers. And in this case, multiplying two functions, f of x times g of x. So from these numbers, we actually have created ordered pairs. We've created a new function, f of x times g of x. So I'll just write those ordered pairs out, and as we're recording them, feel free to plot them on the graph. So we have negative 4, negative, sorry, negative 4, positive 49. Okay, negative 3, positive 30. So imagine these are gone now. We're looking at the x coordinate and our new y coordinate. Okay, negative 2, 15. Negative 1 and 4. 0, negative 3. 1, negative 6. 2, negative 5. Zero, or 3, 0. And 4, 9. So take a look at the graph. Can we fit the first two ones? Negative 4 and 49? No, it's way up there. Can we fit 30? Still too high. But we can start at negative 250. So if you guys could just start plotting these points. Negative 215. Negative 4. Negative 4. One negative six. Two negative five. Three zero. And four nine. So without connecting the dots, any guesses on what shape this graph is going to be? Parabola. Yeah. A parabola. Okay. So if you want to label this, this is F G of x. Or you can write f of x times g of x. So I'm just going to leave this up so you have the visual, but I'm going to talk through the next questions here. So we plotted the points for part C. It's now telling us what the functions of f of x and g of x are. So it's telling us that f of x is what? 2x plus 1? What does it say, part C? 2x plus 1. Okay, and it's telling us g of x is what? x minus 3. Okay. x minus 3. So we have our two functions. Now what it's asking us to do is multiply those two functions. So we did that with the ordered pairs. Now we're going to do that with the actual functions. 
Okay, so operation will be multiplying. F g of x is actually like going f of x multiplied by g of x. Those are the same things. And we're just going to sub in. f of x was 2x plus 1. g of x is x minus 3. So two binomials, we have to foil that out. So we get 2x squared. Negative 6x plus 1x gives us negative 5x. And lastly, negative 3. So that's for part C. I'm just going to jump to part G. What did you guys notice happened when we multiplied a line times a line? x times x gives us an x squared, which is a parabola or a quadratic function. So when you multiply a linear function times a linear function, many times you're going to get a quadratic function. Okay, but there is a scenario where maybe we wouldn't get a quadratic function. Can you guys think of that? Can we multiply two straight lines and not get a quadratic function? Are there any straight lines that wouldn't have an x? A horizontal line? Good. Okay, so for part G, or what's after the G? Yeah, it's the second part of G. Okay, so for example, what if we had, I'm just going to say h of x. So it's just another function. What if that was 2x plus 3? And then let's say j of x. What if that was just y equals 4, basically? So it's still a straight line. It's just horizontal. And then this one would look something like this. Okay, two straight lines. What's going to happen when we multiply them? Okay, so hj of x, that's going to equal 2x plus 3 times 4, which gives us 8x plus 12. Is that still linear? Yep. Okay, so that's an example where you would still have degree 1. You wouldn't necessarily get a quadratic. Just rewinding a little bit, let's go back to, we're going to skip D. If you were to graph those, you would get the graph that we plotted here, so good job. Uh, part E, we have to determine the domain and the range of this parabola. So the domain of any parabola is what? All real numbers. Okay, I'm just going to use interval notation. So x is an element of all real numbers, or we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. How would I find the range? Is it going to be the lowest point right here? Are you sure? Is that actually the vertex? We don't know. So maybe we will do, oh, we already did that. Okay, can you guys graph y equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 3? And what do we need to trace in order to figure out our range? Our minimum. Okay, so we need to find the minimum. And that's going to help us find our range. So if someone has determined that, okay, maybe I can do this as well. You got it? 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Graph it. Then we're going to go second trace. Left bound, right bound. 
And we're only worried about the y value, so I think someone said it already. Okay, negative 6.13, I believe. So our range will be equal to that negative 6.13. And it will go all the way up to infinity because it keeps going and going and going. Our parabola is facing up. So is everyone good with the graph? I can move the screen. We are going to complete now part F. So F, G of 8. There's two ways we can do this. So the first way is we can go F of 8 times G of 8. And the second way is that we're just going to go F, G of 8. Okay, what was F, G of X? Well, we found it to be 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So if we're finding fg of 8, what are we replacing the x with? With number 8. Good. Okay, so go ahead, just sub 8 in. 2 times 8 squared minus 5 times 8 minus 3. Jared, when you're done, what did you what do you get? 85? Everyone agree? Trust him. You trust him? I trust him too. Because it's right. Okay, now before we found we knew that f of x was equal to 2x plus 1. And g of x is x minus 3. So we're just subbing in 8 into f of x and 8 into g of x. So we have 2 times 8 plus 1. That's our f of x, or sorry, f of 8. And we're going to multiply that by g of 8. So 8 minus 3. So 17 times 5. We get 85? FG of 49. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to do that, and I'm going to come around and, and get a few volunteers to put up their answers. Faith in yourself, buddy. I told you. Yeah, that was really 
plus 10. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, very good job. You end up with 3x minus 17 root x plus 10. Good work. Then what you could have done, you could have just subbed in 49 right into this final answer right here. Okay, but because I went around and asked you to do this, you, this is probably why you chose this method. Okay, so you took f of 49 and multiplied it by g of 49, and from there reduced it down to 38. Good job. And that's lesson three. So, are there any questions? You guys nailed it. Good job. Yeah, we did.